So I think many of you guys at this point have made a connection between the debugger and our dust checks, right? They're both doing a very similar thing. The computer is basically when you pause it and start stepping through is going line by line, right? And showing you exactly the changes, just like the desk checks we're doing as we're kind of in our minds going through the program, uh, checking and trying to anticipate or to demonstrate the changes in the various variables, right? Um, and many of you are maybe thinking, well, if I can do this in the debugger, why am I still doing desk checks? Well, desk checks are still extremely important to help you train your brain to think like a computer. And the more you can train your brain to think like a computer, the easier it is to troubleshoot your code. You write better code. There's just a whole lot of benefits of training your brain to kind of think algorithmically, if you will. So, But at the same time, the debugger can help you get past uh, an assignment, a desk check assignment that you're just kind of not quite sure what's going on there. You, you think you've got it, you think you've got it, but it, the assignment keeps telling you you don't. Well, the simp one of the simplest things you can do is just drop it into a program and open it up in the debugger and just validate exactly what's going on and you can see exactly what's happening. So I've got a, a quick program I wrote up uh, to, to kind of demonstrate how you can use the debugger to kind of do the desk check type exercise. So I've got a quick simple program up here. Um, for those of you who pay tithing, this program basically demonstrates what your after tithing paycheck will look like. And it's a fairly simple program. Uh, I've got uh, a single function, right, called calculate. I'm calling the calculate from a button. Inside my function, I'm declaring a variable called tithing percent, which is 10%, which is a standard tithe. Um, I'm got uh, declaring hours and wage, which I'm pulling in from these input boxes here, hours input and wage input. These input boxes are getting pulled into variable called hours and a variable called wage. Uh, because I'm dealing in numbers, I'm doing a parse float on these. Um, and then I'm doing a, uh, defining another variable called my money and then doing a multiplication and then doing a calculation of tithing and then subtracting the tithing from my money. So the one thing that is similar in here, you'll notice here that most of these variables only get one value throughout this program, but the val variable my money uh, ends up uh, getting a couple of values in there. And, and you'll notice then in our desk checks, that's kind of a common theme is we're watching value variables change, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do in order to do my desk check is once I've got the program loaded, I've got it open in uh, Chrome, over here and I'm going to go to inspect and open up my debugging tools, right? I'm clicking over to the sources tab. I've got nothing in here, but I know how to fix that. I've, if you've got your file browser open, that's great. If not, look for this little button here, which opens it up. Make sure your program is selected and you can hide that again. And then I usually put a breakpoint on the very first line in my function I'm trying to debug because that allows me to just step through the whole thing. If it's a small function, that's relatively easy. So let's say I have worked 40 hours this week and I make $16 an hour. Calculate this and I'm just gonna notice it's gonna pause right there at the beginning. And then I'm just gonna step through, right? You, you've got over here, just like our columns for our desk checks, they're not quite in the same column format, but I've got all of my variables over here in the local scope showing up just like the columns of my desk check. And at the very beginning, they're undefined. They don't have a value yet. But as I step through, I can see each of their very first values. First value for tithing percent is 0.1, right? First value for hours, it pulls in 40. So that's accurate. Uh, first value for wage is 16. All's looking good. I do my calculation on my money and my money gets calculated at 640, right? That's good. Now I'm gonna take the 640 and times it by the tithing percent to see what the tithing should be on this num this uh, here. And the tithing is calculated at 64, right? And then the very last thing that happens is notice I've got my money here and it gets changed at this point, right? So we get the second value of my money, which ends up being 576, which is the number that we then end up outputting to our end user your money after tithing is 576. Now this was a really quick, very simple demonstration, but the same concept works for a bigger program or a smaller program. You put your breakpoint in and you slowly step through and you just watch the variables over here 
You know, if you've got a lot of aerials, you may have to scroll down a little bit, but you just watch them and you just check them as they change each line at a time. And that should help you figure it out. Now, the one caveat I want to warn you guys again, this does not mean that this is going to be how you do your desk checks from here on out. I want you to try to do them manually. I want you to try to train your brain to act like a computer. This is going to be an option for you to basically get past um, something that you're not quite figuring it out. Otherwise, you're going to cheat yourself if you just use this method every time. So good luck.